Meetings where we can see other makers are cool. But which one is the coolest for nerds like me? Come with me to a trip to find it out. Gritty YouTubers, here is the guy with a Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Let's first get an overview of the usual suspect for such cool conferences. The Maker Fairs, Defcon and the Hackaday Super Conference. Maker Fairs are good events for father and kids. They usually are also quite broad in scope, so not ideal for nerds like me. Defcon, on the other hand, is perfect for nerds, but not for me, because I'm not particularly interested in security. When I saw this tweet from Chris Gamel on October 26th, I thought, excellent opportunity. Two guys I like to meet in one place. But Superconf is next week and it is nearly 10,000 kilometers away. Impossible, but interesting. So I started with the first check. Are still tickets available? Yes, a few are still available. Then I started to check my calendar. It was possible to shift some appointments and clear the needed time. I could change the video planned for Thursday to Sunday. So I only had to create one additional footage for the following Sunday. Two obstacles less. The most significant barrier, however, was still there. Is it worth to fly two times 12 hours to Los Angeles and back for such an event? And what about my wife? Would she agree on such a short notice? I asked her and she had no objections. Again, one obstacle less. When I searched for a flight, I found one with a stopover in San Francisco. So a new plan emerged to combine Los Angeles with San Francisco. I did not have a lot of time for my decision. The planes continued to fill up. California is a popular destination for Swiss tourists. Finally, after some pondering, I booked two flights, Zurich, Los Angeles and San Francisco, Zurich. Then the hotels, and a car to bring me from Los Angeles to San Francisco. Via highway number one, of course. Now I was calm and pleasant anticipation started to appear. The last time I was in California was at least 15 years ago and I have good memories. But wait, immigration to the US is not easy, even for a Swiss. Is my passport biometric and machine readable? What about the ESTA authorization? Fortunately, everything was okay. Thursday appeared very fast and I went to the airport and after passing all checkpoints for US flights, I entered the plane and we left to Los Angeles. Nearly 24 hours after I left my home, I arrived at my hotel in Pasadena and got a well-deserved sleep. Next, I went to Superconf. The first day it was in the headquarters of SupplyFrame, the new owner of Hackaday. I had no idea what to expect. Right at the entry I met with Scotty from the YouTube channel Strange Parts and we had an interesting talk about YouTube and Shenzhen, China, where he lives. Then we got our badges. A lovely piece with a hand soldered keyboard and lots of other stuff. It runs BASIC, one of the first languages used by microcomputers. You can see presentations about how it was created on YouTube if you are interested. The first day was dedicated to hacking and creating creative things using this batch. Three days later, the best ideas were chosen and rewarded. You find the link to this video in the description. Oh, oh, sorry. Uh, I was chatting on the badge with uh, some of my friends. What is uh, oh, I'm Morgan. Uh, me and Ben invented the badge, uh, and we also implemented IRC on there. 
Uh, we have about eight of our friends uh, chatting right now. Uh, this is possibly the first exam functioning example of the uh, ESP32 mesh actually broadcasting. This is made possible by this uh, add-on board I made, so hardware component as well. There were already some workshops on Friday. These workshops had to be booked in advance, and I was too late, of course. You see, the hacking already started. Later I met Chris, the co-moderator of the Amp Hour podcast. He is an excellent networker and introduced me to many interesting people. To name two, Jeron Domburg, a mastermind who works for Espressif. He told me that we could expect a new ESP32 shortly. Of course, I hope I will get one to show it on this channel. He was always one of the most prominent hackers of the weekend and on Sunday, too, gave a remarkable presentation. I put the link in the description. And I was able to thank Al Williams, a Hackaday staff writer who wrote a few articles about my videos. After having numerous talks with lots of interesting people, it became clear that most of them work in the tech industry. And in the spare time, they create cool things. I also met young engineers who dreamed to create the next big thing, something which is very common in California. In the evening, during the party with lots of food and beer, the talks continued. And I met another Swiss guy, Adrian, the creator of DAISY, an AIS tracker for ships. His journey was a little bit shorter, he lives near Seattle. You can imagine, I felt like a fish in fresh water. Interesting talks, good food and enough beer. On Saturday, the conference was moved to the College of Music, because the 500 attendants would not fit in the offices at Supply Frame. Two presentation locations plus a big hacking space outside the building were set up. Because the weather in Pasadena in November is warm, it was no problem to work outside. All presentations of the main room are published on YouTube. You find links in the description for the most interesting ones. This is of course very subjective and I was not able to join all of them. Also because some very interesting presentations were in the other smaller room. Unfortunately, they are not on YouTube. I thought they were taped and I hope they will appear later. The organizers did a great job. The only thing was timing. My advice for the next time would be to include fewer presentations and give them more time. And of course, add a watchdog, which interrupts if time is over. Here is a list of the different presentations given in the second room. The one I liked most was Jennifer's presentation about machine learning. You take these features and you dump them in your machine learning algorithm that you've magically created. And from this machine learning algorithm, it gives you a result. You want to do some cleaning, some post she used a Raspberry Pi to create a self-learning magic wand for Halloween. Her input for sure will help me to start with this topic. The presentation I liked most in the main room was the one given by Sharon. He hacked an ordinary printing cartridge. Um, you know what happens if you give a kid a label writer? He'll just immediately put his name on every single thing. And obviously I'm an adult, I'm, I'm above that. Well, no, actually I'm not. <laughs> so. <laughs> You know, and the nice thing is you can print on anything. So, kind of went overboard a little bit at some point, but um, yeah, so. Before the party started, the Hackaday prizes were awarded. You may be surprised when you look at the jury. There you find, for example, one of my favorite YouTubers, Colin Furse. The Sunday included other exciting presentations. The hacking went on outside the building and I met with lots of people. Even a few ham radio operators found together. A ham radio license, in my opinion, extends the possibility of makers because we are allowed to use our own transmitters with a higher power. In the afternoon, by chance, I met Charles Lohr, a YouTuber I admire a lot. I had no clue that he also was attending. This is the power of such a conference. It creates a critical mass, which enables many interactions. 
Of course, I also met some of my subscribers like Drew. The most entertaining presentations on Sunday was given by Sami Kamar, a famous hacker. This time he did not talk about hacking. He talked about how he created remotely controlled and illuminated balloons for a birthday party. Our Wi-Fi, sub gigahertz, 2.4 gigahertz proprietary stuff. There's Bluetooth, BLE, um, LoRa, Zigbee, Z-Wave, ultrasound, wire, so many other protocols. I'd be really curious to hear from any of you uh, suggestions of other protocols to use. Uh, and then a couple of these just went out the window because they're more expensive. The famous YouTuber Ben Krasnov showed how he created copper traces on plastic. He used this product as an example on how this technology is used. Copper on plastic. And in fact, this, this little uh, gizmo that you're looking at is a trade show um, sales uh, pitch piece made by a company. I knew it quite well because it is a demonstration object of multiple dimensions, a Swiss company I helped to found. They also create objects with copper traces on plastic, but not only on flat plastic. They produce even three-dimensional objects with traces. This is why this new technology is called 3D MID. I leave a link in the description if you are interested where it can be used. This once again showed how small the world is. The last part on Sunday evening was the presentation of the batch hacking. Please watch the video if you want to see the creativity and dedication of the participants. On Monday morning I had to leave to San Francisco and the Silicon Valley, where I also got a lot of new impressions. Now you know the answer to the question from the beginning. Yes, this is for sure the coolest meeting for people like me. All in all, it was well worth the effort to go to California and attend the Hackaday Super Conference. And it is well possible that I will also join next year. I will keep you informed via Twitter if this happens. Maybe we will meet there. What's your first time at Supercon? I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. You find the links in the description. Thank you. Bye.